meetings. Can't live with them, can't live without them. Especially in these new, normal, unprecedented, and socially distanced Zoom fatigue pandemic times. We need to make sure that more meetings don't cause us more problems. Here are three tips to flatten the meeting curve for essential businesses. While there are some respects in which meetings in a work from home environment differ from in-person meetings, they share a surprising amount of similarities in the long run. Personally, I think it's a net benefit that at any moment in a given meeting, there is a non-zero chance of a cat appearance. That and the fact that pants are, for all intents and purposes, optional, are some really strong benefits to remote work. Balancing that out, however, is the potential for overscheduling, the stress of all eyes being on you constantly, and the restriction of subtle social cues that make video conferencing a particularly challenging medium to hold meetings on the regular. These are just some of the traps that are easy to fall into regardless of whether meetings are in person or conducted online. Here are three tips on how to avoid the most common mistakes. First is the agenda. It serves a couple purposes when put out before the meeting starts. Uh, namely, it puts people at ease, so there's nothing unexpected coming their way. Uh, it allows for any research or clarification to be done before the meeting. It allows everyone in the meeting to hold each other accountable, not only within the meeting, but from meeting to meeting. And it also highlights the actual issues that need to be solved in the meeting. Next would be to split the responsibility between who's leading the meeting and who's taking notes. This should be done by two separate people within the meeting. The meeting facilitator will direct the conversation, uh, recap the last meeting's notes, curtail any tangents that pop up, and determine any to-dos or follow-ups as appropriate. Now, the document manager, as the equal and opposite of the meeting facilitator, will record the conversation points, provide the previous meeting's notes, update any old or outdated task statuses, and clarify any to-dos or follow-ups given by the meeting facilitator so everyone's on the same page. This symbiotic relationship of mutual trust and respect between the two roles means that nobody is dictating the meeting and it allows all the meeting participants to feel heard and valued. Lastly, and most importantly, you want to respect the intro and the conclusion of the meeting. The introduction should start on time and take the first five or so minutes to segue from the day-to-day -day battles into a productive discussion. This would take the form of a more casual conversation, preferably something personal and, if at all possible, positive or uplifting in some regard. The conclusion of the meeting should be at least five minutes before the scheduled end time of the meeting and include a recap of the to-do list, the scheduling of any follow-up that is required, and if you're feeling bold, a rating from each of the meeting participants on a scale of 1 to 10 on how they thought the meeting went. At the end of the day, the goal of all of this is for you to have productive meetings where people feel heard and valued that end on time. If you have a way to make meetings more manageable, post it on our subreddit at r slash ourcompose. And if you need some meeting facilitation tools like Camboard or Nextcloud, go to rcompose.com to sign up for your own personal instance today.